Welcome guys, I'm Gio here, hope you're having a great day and in this video we continue our discussion about differences between promises and observables. In previous video we talked about you know differences on a higher level you know we talked about some properties and some high level differences but now it's time to look at some technical details. So we are going to have to accomplish some task and in this video we will accomplish this task by using promises as much as possible. In the next video we will do uh, exactly same task but we will try to use observables as much as possible and then we will try to compare these results and see you know what are the key differences and why we might want to prefer observables or promises in most of the cases. So let's jump into the code and see what we've got. Okay, first of all, we have this API service. Of course, we don't have a real backend, but this service will simulate this backend situation. And we have internally this array of uh, categories of games. And then under each category, we have some titles, you know, some games here. And we have two methods. First is to get the list of categories with this and the second is to get the games under the given category with category ID and they are promise based and we will uh, be using these methods to accomplish our task. Now another interesting thing on this app here is a promise page which is uh, just a regular angular component and this is a place where we will be performing most of our work. Okay, so what do we want to accomplish? First of all, we want to uh, get the list of categories and display them somewhere here on this page. So let's jump right into this and uh, implement it. First, I will need to use this API. I will define some um, categories and then I will use the method from our API service called get categories promise because well this is promise based so let's do this right now Okay, let's check the result first and then go over the code. As you see, we have the list of categories displayed nice here. We have strategy games and we have RPG games. These are the ones that we have in this internal structure. Now let's go over the code. It's very simple. We just define cats as categories and then we are assigning it the result of this call get categories promise and the result of this call is a promise and so we are saving here the promise that will eventually resolve to list of uh, the list of game categories in the template then we are using a regular ng4 but here we are using async pipe what this does basically is that when angular look at the cats and the async it will say okay the cats is promise its result is not available right now but we are using async here so i'm gonna wait for this cats whenever, whenever it gets resolved and once we get the result from this promise then i will iterate over this so that's that's what happens here and then we will uh, you know we are taking the item and getting name and just displaying it and that's why we have this nice list over here okay what's our next goal now when user clicks on this item on the list we want to display the list of games under this category so let's code this up
Okay, let's check this in the browser first to make sure it's working. Yes, it is working fine. Whenever I click on the category, I get another list of games under this category. So that's good. Now let's uh, go over the code. So first uh, we have this click event handler, load cat, and we are passing here the ID for given category. So whenever I receive cat ID, I have this variable selected cat games, and I just use this get games promise method, which is defined on our API. And then we are going over this and displaying this you know list here of the games. So it's very simple, very straightforward. We are using promises as much as possible as was uh, our goal initially. Now, to have a, you know, a better comparison between promises and observables, let's try to make it a bit more complex. Let's add some search field. And when user types in something, then we will have to filter down this list, display this filtered list of games. So let's accomplish that right now. Okay, let's check this field first. And as you see, we have this search field and it's not doing anything right now, but it is bound to this variable search string, which we'll be using for our search. Now, our API is not a really good API. It doesn't support search. So we have to do it uh, on a client side since we are expecting the list to be short that should be okay. Now, there are a couple of things that are going on here. And uh, this input, this search feature makes things more complex. Now, on one hand, we have this click event when we load a list of new category. On the other hand, we have this search thing going on when user types in something and we want to search for the uh, given string, you know. These are two different events, but they somehow have to work together to achieve the final result. So let's try to accomplish that. Okay, let's check our page first and make sure it's working and then get back to our code. So we select the strategy game uh, and let me type in something. Let's say three kingdoms or cities. It seems to be working. Uh, let's look at the template first since this is uh, easier to follow. So here again, we have the list of selected games, you know, it's just a regular array of games. Then we have this selector of categories and each uh, category item has the click event. When user clicks on them, this method will be launched. Then we have this input, search input. We are using a two-way data binding with search string variable, search string variable. And uh, then we have this uh, special method, special event ng model change. So whenever this change happens inside our search field, we are using this method, filter games. We are not using this result actually, but we are using this method, filter games. Now let's look at our component. So since there are two different events that might happen during the user interaction, uh, we have two methods for handling them. We have first is a load cat, which is triggered when user clicks on the category and then we have a filter games and this is triggered when user will type in something there 
Uh, let's look at this method here, fetch and filter. Now, when the click event happens for a category, we, we uh, store this selected category in a new variable called selected cat ID. And then we call this method fetch and filter. Now, this method here has access to the selected category ID, so it will load this, so we will have this list. And then once we have this list, we are using we are using the search string here and it is bound to our input field here. So we are doing the fetching and filtering in a single method. Why we are doing this? Well, because we need this method as well whenever user tries to search in for something. Now in a real app, we might have some caching here so we don't call this method every time we will uh, try to not call this as often as just user types in and we can do all these sorts of tricks but promise solution demonstrates that this can get tricky uh, very fast what if we add another search criteria here or we add sort or we add any other complexity and as it gets more complex this code will definitely get more and more complex where things will get tricky and uh, we will lose the readability. So we had to store this in global variable here. We have, you know, we are, we are doing this fetch and filter. We are doing it twice, you know, in, in these two different methods and it's uh, hard to follow. One can argue that this can have all the, um, this, this might not depend on the global variable, but then we have to store them uh, still because when I call filter games, I still need to know what was the category ID that was selected before. So the point is that promises are good, but as the things get more complex in the UI, using them gets more and more complex. And here we have it. This is a promise based solution. In the next video, we will use uh, observables as much as possible and then we will compare these two components promise based and observable based and we will see what are the benefits of using uh, observables and we'll see how much more readable this solution will be so this is for this video hope you enjoyed it click the like button subscribe and uh, share it with your friends